Hey there, Comets. I am back with Chapter 9 of Frindle. Chapter 9 is called Chess. Mrs. Margaret Chatham had been the principal of Lincoln Elementary School for 18 years. She knew Mr. and Mrs. Allen because they had all served together on the building committee when the old Lincoln School was torn down and the new one was built six years ago. When she telephoned on the afternoon of October 1st to set up the meeting, Mrs. Chatham asked Nick to be there too. It was 6.30 when she knocked and Nick opened the door. Good evening, Nick, she said. No smile. Hi, Mrs. Chatham, said Nick, backing away as she filled the doorway. She was a large person, as tall as Nick's dad, with wide shoulders. Nick guessed she could play linebacker on a football team, because that's what his dad had played in college. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Allen, she said, stepping into the living room. She was wearing a long black raincoat with a red silk scarf tied loosely around her neck. She kept her coat on, but took off her scarf and tucked it in her left pocket. She shook her hand swiftly with both of <clears throat> Nick's parents before sitting down on the chair to the left of the couch. Nick's mom and dad sat on the couch, and Nick was on the rocking chair that faced Mrs. Chatham across the low coffee table. This is not an easy visit for me. We are having some trouble at school, and it appears that Nick is in the middle of it. Then, while Nick's parents listened, Mrs. Chatham laid out the whole story as she saw it. Nick encouraging the other kids to use this new word, Mrs. Granger forbidding it, the ruined fifth grade class picture, hundreds of kids staying after school, and a general feeling that there was a rebellion at school with no one respecting the rules anymore. Nick watched his mom and his dad while Mrs. Chatham talked, looking from one face to the other. His dad was listening carefully, nodding and frowning. He looked embarrassed about the trouble, but his mom looked kind of annoyed. And when Mrs. Chatham finished her story, Nick's mom was the first one to speak. But doesn't all this seem like a lot of fuss about something pretty silly? Nick sat quietly, but in his mind he shouted, Hooray for mom! Hooray for mothers everywhere! His mom wasn't annoyed with him. She was annoyed with Mrs. Granger, maybe even annoyed with Mrs. Chatham. This was getting interesting. Mrs. Allen was still talking to the principal. I mean, is there really any harm in the children making up a funny word and saying it? Does there have to be a word, a rule, that a word like this may not be used? Mrs. Chatham sighed and said, Yes, I suppose it does seem silly. But Mrs. Granger thinks it's rather like it's rather like keeping children from saying ain't. There have to be standards. That's why we have dictionaries. And really, the problem isn't so much with the word itself, it's the lack of respect for authority. Mr. Allen said, Mrs. Granger's right about that. There have to be standards. We can't have kids walking around saying ain't, can we? That's when Nick piped in. You know that big dictionary in Mrs. Granger's room? The word ain't is right there in the book. I looked it up, and there it was. I don't see why I can't use a word if it's in the dictionary. Mrs. Granger even said that her big, big dictionary was the law. Nick looked from face to face to face. That stumped them all. He had just launched a first-class thought grenade. Well, yes, but, well, as I said, the word ain't and even the word frindle, these are not the real issue here, said Mrs. Chatham. Mrs. Allen said, well, I think the real issue is Mrs. Granger's reaction to a harmless little experiment with language. It's an overreaction, don't you think so, Tom? And Mrs. Allen looked at her husband. It was Mr. Allen's turn to look from face to face to face. He was lost. Yes, well, sure, I, I, I guess so. I mean, it's not like anyone's been hurt. Um, I mean, it's not like vandalism or stealing or something like that. His sentence trailed off and he rubbed his chin and stared thoughtfully through the window on the wall behind Mrs. Chatham. And while the three grown-ups sat there in an uncomfortable moment of silence, Nick had a sudden vision of what was really going on here. It was a chess game. Nick against Mrs. Granger. Mrs. Granger had just tried to end the game by using her queen, Mrs. Chatham, in her black raincoat, the Black Queen. Nick didn't know it until the attack was underway, but he had a powerful defender on his own, good old mom, the White Queen. And the game was not over. It would go on until there was a winner and a loser. Mrs. Chatham didn't stay much longer. There was a little more talk back and forth across the chessboard about how children have a right to explore new ideas, about the importance of respecting teachers and the work they do, about everybody needing to keep up standards and make school a safe place to learn. Then Mr. Allen offered Mrs. Chatham some coffee and banana bread, but she said, no thanks, I really must be going now. She thanked Nick's parents and they thanked her. 
Nick opened the door and she said, good night, Mrs. Chatham. And the black queen put on her red scarf and walked off into the October twilight. Nick, I think we'd better talk a little more about this, said his mom, sitting back down on the couch. If I find out that you've been disrespectful to Mrs. Granger or any other teacher at school, then you really will be in big trouble. I haven't been disrespectful, honest. I did get everybody to start using my word, but like you said, it's not hurting anybody. And I'm sorry if me and Dave and Pete got everybody to ask Mrs. Granger to borrow a frindle. That was mean, I guess, but she started it by making kids stay after school and write a hundred sentences just for saying my word once. All the kids like to use my word. It's just fun, that's all. Well, said Nick's dad, if it gets everyone upset and makes the principal come talk to your mother and me, then it must not be fun for everybody, is it? And I think you should just tell all your friends to knock it off right now. I mean tomorrow. Nick shook his head. I can't, Dad. It won't work. It's a real word now. It used to be just mine, but not anymore. If I knew how to stop it, I think I probably would, but I can't. And Nick looked at both of their faces to see that the idea was sinking in. It was. Like I said, I won't be disrespectful, but I do like my word. And I guess now we're just going to have to see what happens. And the chessmen, Nick's king and queen, had to agree. The game would go on. That was chapter nine of Frindle. Remember, comments to keep reading every day. It's very important that you exercise your brains by giving it that daily practice of reading. I miss you, and I will see you again for more Frindle.